What is up guys, Andy Forest Team Runner here and today I'm giving you guys my first impressions of the Nike Vomero 15. So there we go, seven easy miles done and dusted in the Nike Vomero 15. Today I'm going to be giving you guys my first impressions of this shoe, but fear not, there'll be plenty more testing. If you're new to the channel, we do a speed test and a long run test, which will be coming up next week once we've done a decent long run and a decent speed workout in this shoe to get a better all round picture. But today we're going to be diving into my first impressions and seeing how it got on on the run. If you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content, and we'll start with a technical. So we'll start off the technical by saying I went true to size. I'm a UK size 13 and just as all the other shoes, I went UK size 13 in this thing. In my size, it comes in weighing 305 grams or 11 ounces on the nose and it is indeed a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop, 26 millimeter heel and 16 in the forefoot. And what we'll do as always is we'll talk all about the heel counter area. We'll move on to the tongue, the lacing, the upper midsole and then shift onto the outsole before I give you my first impressions. You'll have to bear with me, it's a little bit awkward pointing and doing stuff with this cast on my hand, so excuse the awkwardness. Uh, the heel counter area, we'll start with that, it's lovely and plush, lots of cushioning in and around this area, rather shallow from here to here, just under the ankle bone. No rubbing whatsoever, as you can imagine, because it's rather shallow, but just a point to note, get a decent lockdown, because if you don't, you will, will or might find your foot slipping uh, up and down in the shoe. I didn't thankfully, very reminiscent of how the PEG 37 felt, but um, yeah, I got a decent lockdown straight off the bat, but bear it in mind, it is rather shallow. Uh, and we have this plastic guard which runs around the heel counter area, again, just to provide a really solid locked in feeling, which I got, thankfully. Uh, we have a very paper thin tongue here on the end, which is on a slant, as you can see, so it kind of wraps around the outside of your ankle. And the cushioning kicks in about, you can't see, a cushioning kicks in about a centimetre down on the padding. And it's very thin, but it's nice across the top of your foot where the laces go. Moving on to the laces, it's a really solid lacing system. Nothing fancy. We've got alternating sort of standard holes and I guess it's, it doesn't look like fly wire, but a thicker version of fly wire. Either way, I used to have issues with fly wire. No issues with this whatsoever because I used to find they stretched. Once I got locked in in the shoe, I really felt secure. And again, we have an extra eyelet there if you wanted to do the extra laces. Again, a word of warning, I didn't need it. And the laces, as you can see, are perfect length. If you were to use these, you might struggle because of the length of the laces. They are on the shorter side. As you can see, without them, they are perfect. Using them, you might struggle. Moving on to the upper, bar that plastic cap around the back of the heel there, we have a lovely breathable upper. Not too breathable, but kind of, for me, perfect in these conditions and again shows with the weight of the shoe they've done a really decent job with this a rather shallow toe box again very similar to the peg 37 so width wise for me with a wider foot absolutely perfect lengthwise perfect but you do kind of feel nice and snug in there because this material does sit uh, on the top of your foot i like it feels a bit more dialed in than a rather baggy toe box. So again, massive kudos there. Plastic kind of laminated print Nike swoosh on the side there. Uh, and a few extra bits of material here, overlays here, just wrapping over the midfoot area to give you that secure feeling. Moving on to the midsole. This is the bit that I cannot confirm nor deny. There is Zoom X in the heel, this chunk here. And we know that there is a thick Zoom Air pod in the forefoot, which I can feel and we'll talk about 
in the first impressions. There has been mixed reports around the foam surrounding that. I've been told it's not React, but I've seen various bits and pieces floating. All Nike are advertising it as is a Nike Air Zoom unit in the forefoot and uh, Zoom X in the heel. So if you know exactly what it is, make sure you leave a comment below to help out other people. I've seen multiple reports that it's full Zoom X uh, with just an airbag in the front. I would not agree with that at all. You can really feel when I was going downhill today, the squishiness of the Zoom Air in the, in the back and I wouldn't say that the rest of it is. I've heard it's not React, but it's a different EVA compound. Who knows? Let me know in the comments below if you can confirm or deny. And then we have a full rubber outsole. Literally the only few minor white spots there and the only areas that aren't covered. Giving solid grip in these wetter conditions. I felt very secure out there today and it's going to make this shoe highly, highly durable. Okay, a quick editorial interlude before we get into this. The weight is wrong. I do apologize profusely. My scales are broken. Someone messaged me on Instagram and said, how were they? They're a really heavy shoe, aren't they? And I was like, no, they're so much lighter than the Peg 37s. And actually my wife then confirmed shortly after I recorded that the scales we have are broken. She ordered some new ones yesterday. They're on their way. She dropped them. So the weight that I picked up on the scales is wrong. I don't know how much they weigh. I'm gonna anticipate in hand that they're slightly heavier than the Peg 37s. But I don't want to re-record it because I want to stand by everything I am about to say. Just ignore every comment about the weight and I compare it, I think, weight-wise to the prism. Again, you can kind of ignore that, not really relevant, but it was my raw thoughts straight after the run. I don't want to re-record it because I feel like I did a good job at explaining how I felt about the shoe. Ramble over, I will get you the proper weight in the speed and long run test. Enjoy! So let's move on to the first impressions. How did I find this shoe? I really, really enjoyed it and I am so grateful that I can say that. You guys know if you're regulars on the channel, I struggle with Nike shoes. The Next Percent is literally for me the only decent shoe that I've tried over the past year. I've had the Zoom Fly 3, I've had the Tempo Next Percent, I've had the Pegasus 37, I've had the Myler. The Pegasus 37 was average at best, the rest of them I just didn't get on with. The, when you get up to my UK size 13 React midsole, very sadly becomes absolutely heavy. Just as a quick example, Nova Blast, 1080 version 10, both 346 grams in my size, decent daily slash max cushion trainers, get the Pegasus 37 in there, 376 grams. Literally, React goes like a brick when it turns to my size. The Myler, 417 grams. I won't go on because you guys know how I feel about it, but when I saw a Nike shoe advertised without React midsole in it, I knew I had to try it because I love the fit and the shape. It works with my feet. It's just the midsole for me that always lets Nike shoes down. I'm pleased to report that I spent my £130 on this shoe and I am happy with the purchase I got from it. I'm not going to say it blew me away, it's not a Nova Blast or a Speed where it literally stands out from the crowd, but it is a solid 7 or 8 out of 10 shoe. Now, I'm a little bit contradicting with what I'm about to say because I'm struggling as to where I can place this in my rotation. It is a soft, plush and cushioned ride in a lightweight package, 11 ounces, 307 grams. That's really, really solid. A very similar weight to the New Balance Fuel Cell Prism. Now compare those two shoes for a minute. The Prism with a firmer Fuel Cell midsole lends itself to being a jack of all trades and you can really pick up the pace in that shoe. And I'm gonna be straight off the bat and honest with you, I don't think this is a shoe that I'm gonna be able to pick up the pace in. For me, this has screamed after the first run, easy and steady miles. Maybe marathon pace at best. We'll see next week when we do the speed test, but I really can't see myself doing a quick turnover in this shoe. So really, from a weight perspective, it's a re I like, I'm blown away. It's really, really solid. I'm delighted. It's bordering on a speed-based shoe for the weight in my size but it doesn't lend itself to speed, if that makes sense. It lends itself to more, because of how cushioned it is and because of the airbag in the forefoot, which is really prominent, I really, really enjoyed it. Much better than the Peg 37. I have to say that I'm gonna to lean towards using it on the easy and steadier days. I have to be honest with you, I am absolutely over the moon. I, as I said, I'm over the moon because I feel like I'm getting bang for my buck in this shoe. And the upper, just really solid. The lockdown solid, the comfort in the heel, everything today made me smile which I'm so grateful for and I just hope to goodness that Nike can produce some more shoes like this moving into 2021. 
It's a very similar experience to the PEG 37 in terms of fit, and I don't want to go into too much detail there because I do feel there's a comparison video there, but it's a better version. So straight off the bat, I'm going to say it's better than the PEG 37. The airbag feels more responsive. It feels more, it's got more bounce to it. It doesn't have that bounce where it makes you want to move, but it has that cushionness that just protected my feet on the easy days today. I just enjoyed every single step, albeit it's absolutely soaking. And even then, when I was running deep through puddles it didn't really feel like it gained any weight despite the fact that it's so ventilated along the top here it was really really good so I've got to be honest with you overall a solid start to life with the Vomero 15. Of course, more testing to come, more running to come, but a very bright prospect indeed. Next week, I'll be doing the speed test and the long run test in the shoe, and I'll report back and either confirm my findings that this is indeed going to be an easy or a steadier day shoe for me, or it really did well in the speed day, or it really did well in the long run. I have a feeling it's going to be a solid long run easy day option as well. So yeah, I've got to be honest with you, soft, plush, cushioned, enjoyable ride from the Vomero 15. Excited to put more miles in it. Hell yes, we'll be getting this thing up to 100 miles and I cannot wait to report back and finish the year off in a decent format. I know I said I wasn't going to buy any more shoes this year, but I have to be honest with you, I got so excited when it got released and it said it didn't have React in it that I just had to try it. It's everything I wanted a Nike shoe to be and more, and I really hope they do more shoes like this in 2021, as I said, because they'll be on to an absolute winner. This isn't average, this is good. This is decent, this is a really solid statement and a good return to form from Nike in my opinion. So there we go, that's my first impressions on the Vomero 15. As I said, more testing to come. I hope you guys stick around. If you do, make sure you subscribe, like, share the video, do all of that good stuff, and I'll see you on the next one. Until then.